Hey, have you ever uttered the phrase, does this metallic chassis and titanium alloy exoskeleton make my butt look big? Does your mechanical genius compel you to create incredibly advanced robotic armor, but also shout your awesome anime super moves as loudly as possible? Well, congratulations, you might be an armorer. But what is an armorer? Well, suit up, strap in, and buckle down, because we're about to make a masterpiece. Have you ever needed some extra protection? Oh, well, okay, well, that sounded like the beginning of a condom commercial. No, like physical protection from bears and stuff. It sure would make stepping on a Lego a whole lot easier. And the ladies always love a man in a suit. But what if we crank that up a notch or two or 20? What if our suit of armor not only looked rad as hell, but also made us nearly invincible? Well, you're in luck. Because in between ingesting several lines of booger sugar and sending paramilitary thugs to harass MTG YouTubers, somebody at Sorcerers of the Shoreline, this company has a name, I will remember it someday, accidentally made something awesome and only slightly to completely bust it. Yes, the Armor Artificer is not only the best artificer by far, it's got one of the strongest late games of any class in D&D. But I'm getting ahead of myself. For now, just channel that inner mad scientist and turn your chain mail into brain mail. <laughs> no, no, that sucks, hold on. Turn your breastplate into a best plate. Uh, no, god. Uh, turn that plate armor into great armor. Uh, F. I'll fix it in post. But first... Do you need help keeping track of the world you've created? Do your players constantly bother you with lore questions you've answered a dozen times? Well, if this sounds like you, the folks over at World Anvil have forged the solution. World Anvil is the one-stop shop when it comes to taking notes, describing locations, and further enhancing your custom game experience. And while we all love our adventures in Faerun, World Anvil is open to over 45 different RPG systems and gives you the tools to create your own. Speaking of creating, there's no better place to begin drafting your custom campaign setting than World Anvil's World Builder, letting you plot out your story, keep track of the characters with the most extensive character manager, create maps with custom location descriptions, as well as establish the history of the regions in your new world. These tools are perfect for DMs, letting you share your world with forgetful players, but also for writers to help visualize that next novel. The best part is that World Anvil is free to use and provides you with a plethora of online tools if you need help using the site. So, go dream up the next great adventure and stay organized with World Anvil. A big thanks to World Anvil for sponsoring the show, and now, back to the video. So you want to learn how to make a little metal magic. Well, as smart as we are, we still got to pass the basics before we can take the busted ass build graduate program. So to do that, we start out as a plain old artificer. Artificers get magical tinkering to make a few little magical effects out of mundane items. Turn a rock into a flashlight rock or make a ring that can replay short messages or sneak up on a party member and make their pants smell like they soiled themselves forever. But we also get a little bit of spell casting. Well, people call it spell casting. We're really just doing long division so fast it looks like magic, but don't tell the wizards. As much as the arm waving and Power Ranger poses look fun, they're really just glorified English majors with a minor in theater. At second level, we get infusions, and someone better call the patent office because we're about to invent some weird shit. Infusions are an incredible ability, not only letting you create insane power-ups for yourself, your weapons, or your armor, but also replicate certain magical items you know about. Right now, you can know four infusions and have two active at once, which you can hoard all to yourself, or I guess give out to the party. There are a ton of infusions out there, but I'm only going to touch on the ones that I think give you the most bang for your mechanical buck, and also create... Iron Man because, well, that's rad. So I'm gonna start with Sending Stones and a Bag of Holding. But if you need a boost now, feel free to do Enhanced Weapon or Armor and switch it up later. Artificers are just cool like that. At third level, we get some tools of the trade, making you proficient in smithing tools, but way more importantly, we can now use heavy armor. As much as I think a wolfskin jumpsuit looks neat, nothing beats that heavy metal look this subclass is going for. Speaking of tools, we also get right tool for the job, so we can spend an hour using our current set of tools to create a new set if we need them. So I hear you asking yourself, how does an artificer make mason's tools out of a brewer's set, or turn thieves' tools into painter's supplies? And that's a fantastic question. Y you see... <laughs> Oh, hold on, wait a minute. We've got ourselves an Iron Man. 
You see, starting at third level, your armor gets a huge buff, turning the entire piece into arcane armor. This armor has no strength requirements, letting even your wimpy halfling scientist buckle in for the best of mecha machinations. This armor also works as a spellcasting focus for your artificer spells, keeping your hands free for... Erupting! And as some added bonuses, it cannot be removed against your will, you can don and doff the armor as an action, and you can retract or deploy the helmet as a bonus action. But hold on, it gets better. Because if you think we're done with the base model, you haven't met an artificer. Whenever you finish a short or long rest, you can swap between what I call the Beef Daddy Supreme Mach 1 or the Blitzy Boy 1000 also known as the Guardian or the Infiltrator. The Beef Daddy is designed for head-to-head -head combat, giving you a defensive field that you can deploy as a bonus action and buffing you with some temporary hit points equal to your Artificer level. But this model also comes with the baddest knuckle dusters you've ever seen with the Thunder Gauntlets. Your fists now count as simple melee weapons that deal 1d8 thunder damage, and if you hit a creature, they get rocked so hard they have disadvantage on any targets other than you until the start of your next turn. Your goal is to run them down, smack them around, and become the center of the fighting, all while creating a sonic boom with every punch. But you can't forget about the Blitzy Boy. This model works as the lighter, faster, and sneakier version, giving you an extra 5 feet of movement and advantage on stealth checks, assuming you're wearing armor that doesn't give you disadvantage, which in that case it cancels it out. But on top of that, you also get a ranged weapon in the form of the Lightning Launcher. This bad boy has a range of 90 feet and does 1d6 lightning damage on a hit, and once on each turn, you can deal an additional 1d6 just for fun. It's essentially a lightning hand crossbow with the same damage as a greatsword. Badass. But wait, if you can believe it, the fun doesn't end there. Because if you remember, you're wearing your arcane armor no matter which model you choose. Meaning that instead of attacking with strength or dex, you can use your intelligence modifier instead. Is that all? If you can believe it, we also get armorer spells. You pick up Magic Missile for some long range heat seekers and Thunder Wave to emit a big blast right in the bad guy's face. This level is just so massive with you, I'm starting to think it's a typo, but we still have a whole 17 more to go. So quickly, we get extra attack at fifth level, but also two more artificer spells with Mirror Image, giving you some illusory duplicates to throw off the bad guys, and Shatter, which I like to flavor as a big badass grenade you can just throw into the fray. Sixth level gets us tool expertise so we can double our proficiency bonus with any tool related check, but we also get another infusion and I really like Radiant Weapon. This not only gives you a plus one bonus to your Thunder Gauntlets or Lightning Launcher, if you are hit by an enemy you can spend your reaction in one of four charges to force a con save or blind the attacking enemy. This gives a ton of options for the Beef Daddy to keep baddies guessing or the Blitzy Boy to get away if cornered by the bad guy. 7th level gets us Flash of Genius to spend your reaction to add your intelligence modifier to you or an ally's ability checks or saving throws because part of being the smartest guy in the room is reminding everyone you're the smartest guy in the room. But at 9th level we get some armor modifications. Now your helmet, boots, chest piece, and special weapon all count as different items that can each hold a different infusion. On top of that, the total number of infusions you can have active increases by two, as long as those extra items are part of the armor, and woo, buddy, is that dangerous. But hold on just a second on those, because we just got two new artificer spells with Hypnotic Pattern and Lightning Bolt. Hypnotic Pattern lets you distract your opponents with a Hypnotic Gaze, Pocket Watch sold separately, and Lightning Bolt is, well, just rad. At 10th level we become magic item adept letting us attune up to 4 magic items at once and we can craft any magic item of common or uncommon rarity for a quarter of the time and half the gold so we can finally open up that fantasy Etsy store. But I'm here for those 10th level infusions. The helm of awareness gives you advantage on initiative rolls and makes sure we can't be surprised but because it's a helmet it fits in with those two extra infused items so why don't we also pick up the cloak of protection for a plus one to AC and saving throws. You are already almost unstoppable why don't we just delete the word almost? At 11th level, we can create a spell storing item to enchant an ally's weapon or arcane focus with any first or second level artificer spell. So give the rogue a dagger of invisibility, or the fighter a great sword of enlarge, or for shits and giggles, give someone you don't care for a fire extinguisher of continual flame. 13th level gets us two more artificer spells with fire shield, which is amazing for the beef daddy, letting you damage anyone who manages to hit you, and greater invisibility, which is perfect for the blitzy boy, letting you use spells and attacks without breaking the invisibility. But it's 14th level where we become a magic item savant. 
We can now attune up to five items at once, and you can ignore all class, race, spell, and level requirements when attuning or using a magic item. But I need those 14th level infusions, baby. First off is the easy one. We get ourselves a belt of giant strength, catapulting your strength score to a massive cap breaking 21. Secondly, we get winged boots, but I see them more as propulsion boots, giving us a way more reliable flying speed without having to expend a spell slot, and giving you a whopping 4 hours of fly speed, recovering 2 hours every 12. And finally, we get us the big boy with the arcane propulsion armor. This immediately increases your speed by 5 feet, which stacks with the 5 feet from the Blitzy Boy, and includes a second gauntlet that deals 1d8 force damage and has the throne property for a short range rocket hand. Now unfortunately this does not stack with the damage from the Thunder Gauntlets, believe me, I checked, but it does give you a second weapon to switch between. However, in all, I think this infusion actually works better with the Blitzy Boy, giving you a short range option over your lightning launcher and an extra 10 feet of movement is huge for getting around. Whew. Holy shit guys, is there still more? So apparently the work is never done because as cool as your armor is, you just upgraded it once again. Your beef daddy Mach 2 can use its big boy energy to pull a creature it can see within 30 feet toward you. And if you pull it within 5 feet, you can make an attack as a part of that reaction. But you didn't stop there. Your other model also got an upgrade with the Blitzy Boy 2000, which makes your lightning launcher even more lightning-y. Now on a hit, the bad guy glows, giving the next attack advantage and doing an extra 1d6 damage, as well as giving the enemy disadvantage on all attacks against you. Whew. That sure is a mouthful, but we're done, right? Because, oh my god. At 17th level, we get our final two artificer spells with Pass Wall and Wall of Force. Pass Wall lets us make a door anywhere, which is kind of a weird spell because the Barbarian can already do that. But Wall of Force makes an invisible wall so strong nothing can physically pass through. This spell is so cool and has a ton of uses, from trapping enemies while you make an escape to making everyone think the town mime is really onto something. Finally, at 18th level, we get Magic Item Master, letting us attune to six items, which is all of our infused items we picked out at once, and Soul of Artifice, which might just be broken. This gives us a plus one to all saving throws per magic item attuned to, and if somehow you're reduced to zero hit points, you can break an infusion and pop back up to one instead. This is one of the most powerful level 20 capstones in 5e, and it makes no sense why they all can't just be this good. So what's the armor or artificer really made of? Well, apparently piss, gunpowder, metal shavings, and raw iron. This subclass is metal as fuck, and I have no idea how it made it past quality control, because it might be too goddamn good. I chose these infusions not necessarily for their power either, but for their versatility and ability to fill out the armor set. Feel free to pick up anything that works better for you in your game, these are just my favorites. The options on how to make this subclass work are also so limitless it opens you up to some of the most insane combos 5e can offer. It hasn't been since the Moon Druid I've said this, but the armorer doesn't feel like a subclass. It feels like a boss fight. But it's the flavor that really cranks this subclass up to the next level. Gundam, Iron Man, Gurren Lagann, Evangelion, hell even Transformers all feel like the inspiration behind this subclass and it's just so f***ing cool. As much as I've loved the creativity 5e brings to a lot of the subclasses we've covered, I think this might have the most flavor potential out of all of them. The downsides of this subclass in my opinion are that it's kind of weak weapon wise. If you don't want to use the thunder gauntlets or would rather use a warhammer or a greatsword, what do you do? Artificers aren't proficient in martial weapons, so you're kind of stuck, right? Well, it's actually just as easy as picking up a feat like Weapon Master or taking a one level dip in fighter to get everything you need. It's so easy, it's really just me stretching to find a complaint. If you can't tell, this may be one of, if not my favorite subclasses in all of D&D. It's fun mechanically, you have a ton to do, your spells are fantastic, and you bonk like a pro. And... robots, man. So if you have an unhealthy fixation with the smell of grease, can turn a bucket helmet into a work of art, and almost single-handedly created a multi-billion dollar movie franchise off the back of your raw charisma and an unparalleled fit check, Guess what? You might be an armorer. Hey guys, thanks very much for watching. If you like this video and want to play this subclass, let me know in the comments. Or if you hate me and everything I do, let me know that too, it's good for the algorithm. Anyway, remember to vote in the poll to pick what comes next, and I'll see you all very, very soon.